thanks again for putting me in. I just wanted to uh, take a, maybe 10 minutes. I've seen this question come up a few times during Code Rage Mobile about uh, either surprise or uh, unawareness that a Mac computer is required to create iOS applications. And it's not entirely technical. Um, there is actually a legal requirement um, by Apple that uh, some of the steps during the uh, development process are done on Mac hardware, in particular uh, the action of uh, packaging and signing your application needs to be done on Mac hardware. So um, as you've seen in many demos today, um, the way that we do this is of course the uh, IDE runs under Windows. This is what you see here. This is a Windows operating system. And I'm running this inside of a Mac Pro, MacBook Pro. I'm connected on the same Mac hardware when I do my iOS development, but there are other options. If you don't own Mac hardware, well, first of all, there's options within Apple hardware. Mac minis are a pretty inexpensive way to get uh, Mac hardware. You put it on your network, you set it up according to the prerequisites, and you're ready to go. But there's another option that I'd like to share with people in case they weren't aware of it, and this is called Mac and Cloud. Mac and Cloud is a hosting service, a Mac hosting service. So they basically have Mac hardware in North America, in Europe, and Asia, and you can sign up for an account and basically use this as your Mac hardware for doing these. If you don't have a Mac at all, then you can use it during your trial period to um, you know, test the product out be able to load up a simulator. You can also use it for doing your actual packaging and signing as well. We did add this to the Start Here page. Uh, it's a link to a special offer from Mac and Cloud to our customers. These are Embarcadero plans. Basically, uh, these are uh, lower cost plans to rent time on these servers. In addition, the nice folks at Mac and Cloud are offering our users additional time for trialing the product. Typically, their trial is eight hours within the first day. And what they're offering to Embarcadero customers is that you can use 24 hours within your 30-day trial period. When you sign up, you get 24 hours, and these can be used at any time. Make sure you do sign out when uh, you're done using the product, or 30 days, whichever comes first, and then you'll be on whichever plan you selected. So I'm just going to give you a quick overview of Mac and Cloud. Basically, when you um, sign up, they're going to send you um, your username and password, uh, the server that you're going to be connected to, and they'll send you uh, basically remote desktop connection. So that's what you see on my desktop here. This is the remote desktop connection for a pop-up window. I'm going to go ahead and, and pop that open, and it basically takes me to a login screen. So I'm going to use my login information that they sent me and I'm going to log in. So during the initialization process, they're starting to meter your time on the application. They know that you're the user. But what's really nice about this uh, setup is that they already have all the development tools installed. Uh, so you have all the prerequisites already set up. You have your Xcode installed. And your Xcode uh, also includes the command line tools that you need. And those are the command line tools that we use uh, to package and sign your application. In addition, PA server is installed. My account, I put it out on the desktop, but you'll find it in the launch pad. And here it is on the launch pad. So clicking it will launch uh, the PA server. This opens up a terminal window. So let me go ahead and enter my password or uh, go ahead and start that. Um, it's going to ask for permissions to uh, give access to the port so that you can run uh, GDB and SSH and a few other tools that we use. So let me uh, start that up. And now we're in PA Server. So inside PA Server, you can get a bunch of uh, information. The one that you care about in particular is what the IP address is, because that's how you're going to connect back to this from your, your host. So let me print that IP address. Okay. And we'll go back into Delphi, and we're going to set up a, a connection. There are a couple different ways to set up this connection, uh, different entry points. Um, if you haven't set up a connection before, then it's going to bring up a wizard and walk you through that. If you have set up a connection, like I have one to my MacBook Pro set up already, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just go right into the tools options for that. And this is called the Connection Manager. This allows you to make multiple connections. I have, I have a connection to my MacBook Pro. I can have a connection to Mac and Cloud, to any number of... Uh, of Windows, Windows machines, remote Windows machines, mm -hmm. all of the above. Exactly, Windows 64-bit machines, anything that is a remote target for the applications that you build. I'm going to create a new connection, and I'm going to call this Mac and Cloud. 
And we'll use platform OS 10 because that's the one that I'm going to be connecting to out there. And I need to provide that IP address that uh, was given to me uh, back from the PA server 74.80.237.0.0. Okay. Let's test that connection. And so we do have a connection out to that remote machine now. And we'll finish. So I'm going to make this my default profile or connection. And we can also then go back into the SDK manager. Well, actually, I don't need to do that. I already have an SDK set up the same between both of them. So let's go ahead and just open up one of these projects. We'll open up the iOS location right here at the top. And so I'm going to set up my target platform for the simulator. And it's already picked up my Mac and Cloud profile because that's my default. Let's just take a quick look at that so we can make sure that this is all looking good. Okay. And we're ready to deploy. So let's go ahead and start the deployment. Now the deployment is going to be building the, 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 the binary, copying over everything that is required to run this inside the simulator on that remote machine. And so there, this includes debug files and symbol files and all the other pieces. So this Any other files? We, we've shown people, you know, the project deployment where you might have a database file, you might have a license file. If it's IB Lite, it might be some, some pictures, it might be some exactly. other data, XML files, whatever. Basically everything that's uh, set up for your app and in that deployment manager. And then as it gets over there, of course, it gets packaged. So that should be about ready to load up. Now, this, this server that I'm talking to is in North America. If you sign up in Europe, you'll be talking to European servers. If you're in Asia, uh, you'll be talking to servers over in Asia. So you'll have a, you know, at least some proximity to the Mac and Cloud uh, servers as well. So loaded right up in the simulator, as you would expect. And we can go ahead and run the application, just like uh, I'm sure this demo has been shown a few times already. And it's showing us in San Francisco looking at the uh, Apple Store, which we I just walked by on Friday the, over at WWDC. Yeah, you can show people under debug in the simulator. We showed this yesterday, but if you haven't looked at the simulator, there's some options you have. There's one of the debug options is location, and right. you can put it a custom location. Or I, I always put Apple headquarters, one infinite loop. It's just so cool. Right. Very cool. Yeah. There is one at, infinite loop. Yeah. And that's what it looks like. Yeah. Uh, so that's really how easy it is. If you don't have a Mac today, uh, Mac and Cloud is a really easy service to get connected into. You do have an extended trial. You have 24 hours over a 30-day period to use it. As you can see, everything is already set up. The only thing you need to do is run PA server, grab that IP address, plug it into the connection manager, and you're ready to go. And then, JT, there's some things you also under hardware in the simulator. I just want people to know the difference between the simulator and the device itself. You can choose the, the default device. You can also set that over in the project target options under iOS That's simulator, correct. like launch for iPad, whatever. Right. Um, also, you have platform application where you can set the orientation if you want to have a custom or fixed orientation, like don't allow rotation or whatever it might be. There are some things that you can't do in the simulator. For example, you can't get at some of the hardware things like uh, you can do a shake gesture, but accelerometer, orientation sensor, uh, cameras. Yeah, some of the things are simulated, some are not. Yeah. Um, so you'll need an actual device to test those things. Um, the, those specific hardware things like microphone input or whatever. There's certain things that aren't mapped through from whatever hardware. The other things people asked us before um, was, is there any way to connect a device on my local machine in USB and have Mac and Cloud know that I've got a device connected on my machine to, to deploy to a device? Not today, though. There are um, products uh, like TestFlight is a service. Um, and what that does is it connects you in through a, um, an account, uh, an Apple developer account, that's like a network account. You may know about this if you work in, a, in an organization with a, uh, you know, more than uh, several developers, uh, you'll have a shared account and you'll be able to do what's called ad hoc deployment. Um, so uh, they offer a service like that for collections of developers who don't um, fall under that with their own company, but need to have that access. So if you use TestFlight, you can provide a remote uh, connection to download the package file uh, onto uh, your device uh, via the web, a web browser typically. Um, there are other ways to simulate a device, uh, though they aren't supported today, like uh, USB over Ethernet. Um, but for today, uh, this is primarily going to be most useful when you're doing simulator uh, type of development. And I think this will be uh, particularly useful if you're evaluating the product and um, haven't invested in any, in any kind of Mac hardware at this point. You can do a lot of your testing 
that's not iOS specific on Win32 because you can set a target project, target platform to Win32 because we have that when, when you have to have the designer. So you have to have design time components anyway. So you can set Win32 and, and do some development and debugging there. Right. And now you can also do some development and debugging on iOS simulator, but ultimately, depending on what your app is doing, You'll, you'll need a device eventually, yeah. yes. All right. Mm -hmm. So, but at least you have X, you don't have, you have Xcode, you've got the code signing, all the things you need, command line tools are all set up in a Mac and Cloud instance when you're there. That's right. Should be really easy to, to get it up and running. Okay. And I basically just went through that process uh, live with you guys in five minutes. Uh, so, you know, if you don't have a Mac today, uh, again, I would recommend uh, checking out Mac and Cloud so that you can, uh, evaluate the product or structured development on iOS um, now. And Olaf is mentioning, Olaf is part of the developer experts, Delphi experts, uh, Danny, uh, Megan, and, and Daniel Wolf did a session this morning on the Apple Instruments for, oh, yes. uh, performance uh, performance analysis of iOS apps. Olaf is part of that team. He's uh, down in Florida, and he just said, we have test flight integration ready for XZ4. He's going to put up a blog soon. Wonderful. So that That's is really cool. That is fabulous. Um, so it sounds like uh, we have a, a solution for those of you without hardware today yeah. to even get to the device. That's good to know. And then eventually, you'll still want a device at some point in time connected. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, if you're if you're going to be deploying to the App Store to a customer, um, you'll eventually need to invest in a device right. and a, a Mac. Uh, ultimately, uh, if you you know if you're doing this uh, professionally or um, making money off of it, then it's a, it's a worthwhile investment. I'm going to use Mac Mini that's recent that has Intel processors and runs more recent OS 10 versions. 300 bucks. Yep, it's for, very affordable. For a used Mac Mini, uh, or a used Mac that's Intel again that runs what Mountain Lion above. I think you need Lion. at least Lion. Or at least above. Lion yeah. and above. So if it'll run Lion and above, let's see. Bruce is asking, did I hear right that Mac and Cloud has PA server pre-installed on the instances? That's correct. Is that just for the Delphi users, or have they done that for all their customers? They've done that for every, basically it's part of their image now. Got so it. So every new account Xcode has PA server. And PA, so Xcode and PA server. Correct. And their job is to keep Xcode up to date and yep. for us to give them PA server if we make any change? Precisely. Got it. Okay. In fact, this is the Update 1 PA server, uh, which is backwards compatible with the 4.0 release uh, uh, cl uh, clients as well. Um, so this will work with, if you haven't updated yet, this will work with your current product and with the update. Excellent, JT. Right. That's what I wanted to show.